What's up guys, today I'm gonna to be reviving my drugstore makeup tag from 2020. I posted this back in June of that year and it ended up getting a lot of traction. It was so much fun to see some of my absolute favorite people here on YouTube talking about their favorite and least favorite drugstore products. And I thought it was high time to do this video again because some of my answers are definitely a lot different than they were back then. So let's go ahead and jump right in and get started. All right, so let's start with question number one. And this one, I'm kicking myself for doing this question because it's so hard. If you could only use one drugstore or affordable makeup brand forever, what would it be? And last time, I don't know why I said this, but I said Makeup Revolution. I I think it was because they have such a wide variety of products and I was at the time I wanted to say ColourPop but ColourPop didn't have a lot of complexion products back then and I was kind of like I don't know what I would use for foundation or concealer and I was trying to find a brand that had a little bit of everything and that it wouldn't bore me over time but while I do like a few Makeup Revolution products here and there most of the ones that I've tried have been duds so I don't want to say them anymore. I I would say now I can safely say it would be ColourPop. I really love their pretty fresh complexion products, the concealer, the foundation. I mean, their line has just kind of really expanded over the last several years. Their palettes are definitely my favorite affordable palettes. They have so many different blushes to choose from. Their Super Shocks, the powders, their highlighters are amazing. I love their Soul Cream bronzer as well as the Super Shock bronzers. They have tons of different lip products to choose from. So yeah, I would have to say ColourPop, their quality is is really good. I feel like most of the time their products are not duds for me. And similar to Makeup Revolution, they're always launching new stuff. So I feel like I would never get bored. So yeah, it's gonna be definitely ColourPop. Number two is what is the most underrated drugstore or affordable brand? So last time I said Koki Cosmetics, and I definitely think there are some products in Koki's line that are underrated. I think their eye pencils and lip pencils are some of my favorites, but I feel like as a whole brand, I don't really love all of their products. Their eyeshadows like aren't the greatest. I don't really love their complexion products. If I had to pick a brand today, I would say Moira. And and Moira is becoming a more popular brand, but I still think they're largely underrated. I know you guys who watch my channel on a regular basis know about Moira, but I still think there are a lot of people who don't. And their quality is amazing. It's like every single thing I try from this brand is just wowing me. And it's hard to believe that they are charging the prices that they are because I can compare so many of the products to higher end. And a lot of them are actually dupes for high end products. So it's a brand that I really just discovered last year, but they've just been surprising me every time with more and more exciting and affordable products. So I see big things for Moira in the future. I can say they're an underrated brand now, but I have a feeling at some point they're gonna be in drugstores or Ulta or something. I just know it because they're starting to gain traction and the products honestly speak for themselves. They're really good. Question number three is what is the most overrated drugstore brand? And last time I said Morphe and I'm gonna stick by that this time. I still think Morphe is very overrated in my opinion. I know there are some people who love Morphe and it doesn't really get the hype that it once did, but other than a couple of products here and there that I've liked, similar to Makeup Revolution, I just feel like I don't get it. They're affordable, but so are other brands like ColourPop and I just enjoy ColourPop's 
formulas and products so much more. To me, Morphe still seems like one of those brands that's private labeled, like with those big palettes that they come out with. I just don't feel like there's a lot of thought behind the collections that come out. It's just kind of, I don't know, it's just kind of boring. And in this day and age, when there's so much makeup out there and so much choice, I feel like you really have to stand out as a brand to get people's attention. And I don't know, I just don't feel like Morphe really does that. Question number four is, what is your favorite drugstore product under $5? So last time I actually said it was the Believe Beauty Foundation, and I still stand by that. I love that foundation, it's amazing, but it's not under $5 anymore, it's actually $5.50. I guess it had to go up a little bit with inflation, but if I had to pick something else, I would say the Essence Six Pan Palettes. These are $3.99 and they're just so good, I enjoy using them all the time. They're awesome travel palettes. They're great when you're in a hurry and you just don't wanna to have to think about what colors to put with what. You know that everything in the palette is gonna to go together. I'm wearing the My Rose Will Go On palette in the video today. I think the quality is amazing on these. I haven't always loved Essence's formula, but it's definitely improved over the years and these I think are just great. I reach for these a lot more than the e.l.f. Bite Size palettes. I just think these are a little bit better of a formula and because they have six shades instead of four, I think you can get more looks out of them. So yeah, these are definitely an amazing gem under $5. And speaking of hidden gems, question number five is what is a hidden gem from the drugstore that no one talks about? So last time I talked about the L'Oreal Studio Secrets Primer, and I still think that's a hidden gem to an extent, but I've heard a lot of people talking about it. It sort of made a little bit of a comeback on TikTok, and I know that at one point L'Oreal was discontinuing it, and they seem to have brought it back. So maybe there was a resurgence in sales, I don't know. And it's kind of hard for me to pick just one hidden gem. I have several videos on my channel about hidden gems at the drugstore, um, but I would probably say this year, the biggest hidden gem that I tried was the Revlon Baked Bronzer. I feel like Revlon as a brand is a hidden gem because they have some really good stuff, but I think just because they've been around forever and they're kind of boring and they don't normally release a lot of new things, people just tend to overlook them, but their Baked Bronzer is seriously good. The formula of this feels so high-end, it's really silky and seamless on your skin, and it has just the slightest, slightest hint of glow. It's not anything sparkly or glittery, it really just prevents prevents it from looking matte or flat on your face. So it just gives it the slightest bit of luminosity. And this particular color that I have, Sunlit Glow, number 110, is just a beautiful color. It warms up my face really well and it's not too orangey. So I think this one is definitely a hidden gem. I don't hear anybody talking about it, but it actually reminds me quite a bit of the Laura Geller baked bronzers and it's made in Italy just like those are. Has the same kind of feel, but it's a fraction of the price you can grab it at drugstores. So if you haven't checked out this baked bronzer, I think this one is a really good hidden gem. Question number six is what is your favorite drugstore foundation? So in my last version of this video, it was Soap and Glory's Kick A foundation, and that one is no longer made, sadly. That was an amazing formula, but I would have to say nowadays, it's the Maybelline Fit Me Dewy and Smooth. I rediscovered this one pretty recently after not using it for many years, and I just fell in love with it all over again. It is such a beautiful, silky texture. It has medium coverage, but it looks like your skin. It's not glowy, but it's also not a matte fit. Finish. It's just that perfect in-between satiny finish that looks just like your natural skin. And it just has a very thin, very fluid texture that melts right in, kind of similar to the Urban Decay Naked Skin Foundation, if you've ever tried that one. It's just very weightless, and the dewy and smooth version doesn't cling to dry patches or make my skin look overly dry. And they also do have a matte and poreless version of it as well. So if you don't have dry skin, if you're more oily or combination, that one might work really well for you. So yeah, I would say at the moment, Maybelline Fit Me is probably my number one, but I also still really love the Believe Beauty Foundation too. That one's amazing. Question number seven is, what products do you tend to buy more at the drugstore versus high-end? So 
This answer really hasn't changed very much since the last time, if at all. Um, I would say blushes. I definitely buy more at the drugstore. I do buy some high-end, but when the high-end brands are charging $30 and up for one single blush and you can get an amazing formula at the drugstore, most of the time I'd rather just buy the drugstore option. And same thing when it comes to mascaras. I think there are incredible mascaras at the drugstore that really the only high-end mascara I buy right now is the the Thrive Cosmetics one because that's my favorite tubing formula. And I really haven't found a drugstore tubing mascara that competes with that one yet. But all other mascaras, I just stick to the drugstore formulas because you can't beat them, they're great. And I would say lip products too, lipsticks, lip glosses, and lip liners. I don't really know of many high-end formulas that are any different really than the ones at the drugstore. If you think of like the Maybelline lifter glosses that are awesome, NYX has some really great lip products. I love Flower Beauty's lip products as well. Their lipsticks are some of my all-time favorites. Essence has some great lip liners that are like $2. So I think the only time I buy a high-end lip product is maybe if there's a specific color that I haven't seen at the drugstore that really kind of pulls me in or maybe some type of claim like to smooth your lips or plump or something, then I might try a high-end version. But if I'm just buying like a regular lip product, I, I don't really notice a big difference between high-end and drugstore. Question number eight is what drugstore brand do you think is overpriced? So last time I said NYX, but NYX in recent years, since I made the last video, has really kind of become more popular again with TikTok. A lot of their products have gone viral. And I've noticed that in that time, they really haven't raised their prices that much. I don't think they're the cheapest drugstore brand in the world, like Essence or Elf, but they also have a lot of products that are still under $10 or around the $10 price point. Um, I would say nowadays, probably L'Oreal is the most overpriced brand to me. A lot of their stuff is between $15 and $20, and there are a couple things that are a little over $20. And for drugstore, I think that's kind of crazy. I was looking at Ulta's page the other day, and I couldn't find anything L'Oreal that was under $10 anymore whereas NYX still does have quite a few things under 10. So yeah, L'Oreal has just gotten really, really expensive. Um, question number nine is what is your favorite drugstore dupe? So this is really hard too, because I do so many dupes on this channel. I have tons and tons of dupe videos. How do I just pick one thing? I don't know. Um, I guess one dupe that really truly wowed me this year was the Wet n Wild blush stick in the shade Peach Bums being a dupe for the Charlotte Tilbury Pinkgasm. That really blew me away. When I saw the two side by side, this $4 Wet n Wild blush stick compared to this luxury $40 Charlotte Tilbury blush and how they looked exactly the same, that just really blew me away. I thought that was incredible. And it's really proof positive that you don't have to spend a lot of money on makeup to get very similar results to the high-end stuff. So I would say that's definitely my favorite dupe of this year. Question number 10 is what is the best drugstore eyeshadow formula. Um, last time I said ColourPop, I think I'm still gonna stand by that. ColourPop has always been very consistent. I really enjoy their eyeshadow formula. I think some brands tend to use different factories here and there, and sometimes the formula can vary between palettes, but all of ColourPop is made in the same factory in the US. They actually own it. So I think they can really kind of keep things very consistent. And I never feel like I have to worry when I buy a ColourPop palette that it's going to be different than a previous one. So that opinion really hasn't changed over the last couple of years, but I would have to say Moira is is just about tied with ColourPop. I really love their eyeshadow formula too. Um, question number 11 is what is the worst drugstore eyeshadow formula? Last time I said L'Oreal and I'm gonna stick with that for now. I can't remember the last time I tried a L'Oreal eyeshadow that I liked. Other than those infallible singles that were really good once upon a time, they haven't updated their eyeshadow formula in years. They still have those La Palette nudes sitting on the shelves. They also have like that Paradise Enchanted palette. They just haven't come out with anything new in forever. And as expensive 
expensive as L'Oreal is, they really should change up the formula a little bit and kind of make it go with the times a little bit more. So yeah, I would have to say L'Oreal. I mean, they honestly haven't come out with new eyeshadows since I did this video last time, since even before that. So they definitely need to make some changes. Uh, question number 12, drugstore brand you used to love but aren't crazy about anymore. So last time I said NYX, but like I said before, they've actually made quite a bit of a comeback lately and they've revamped some things. They've come out with some products that ended up going viral. So I've found myself more interested in NYX lately than I used to be. Um, not to pick on L'Oreal, but I would have to say L'Oreal for this one. I used to love them as a brand. If you had asked me, I don't know, like 10 years ago, what's my favorite drugstore brand? It would have been L'Oreal because they always seemed kind of like the highest end makeup at the drugstore. They seemed kind of fancy. Their packaging looked really nice and they always used to have just slightly higher prices than everybody else. They just kind of seemed more luxurious than some of the other brands like CoverGirl and Maybelline, but other than a few standout products like the Studio Secrets primer that I like and some of their complexion products that are really nice. I almost kind of look at them now as like a dusty old makeup brand. Like when I go to the drugstore, the eyeshadows haven't been updated in forever. Their blushes are the same ones that they've had for years and years. The lipsticks still have that old perfumey scent that they used to have. I mean, I just think L'Oreal needs a complete overhaul. Question number 13 is a drugstore product you didn't expect to like but totally wowed you. Um, last time I said the Maybelline Nudes of New York palette because that really did wow me at the time. I think Maybelline's another brand that really had not updated their eyeshadows in a really long time. And then they came out with that palette and it was better than anything they had ever done. And I bought it expecting to hate it and really ended up liking it quite a bit. So for an updated version, I would have to say probably Revlon's powder blushes. Those really surprised me because in the past Revlon really hasn't impressed me, but this year in particular, I tried several things from them, like their baked bronzer, their baked highlighter, which is incredible, some of their newer lip products, and these blushes in particular, I feel like they compare to NARS blushes, and I think I even compared them once in a dupe video earlier this year. They're beautifully pigmented, they blend out so seamlessly on your cheeks, they really feel like such a high-end formula, not to mention the colors that they come in are gorgeous. So those really surprised me. I didn't expect to love them quite as much as I actually do. And then question number 14 is, what's my favorite affordable eyeshadow palette right now? In the last version of this video, I said the BH Cosmetics Love in London palette, and I still adore that palette. I think it's beautiful, but I haven't reached for it in a while. I'd say if I had to pick my current favorite eyeshadow palette right now, or like the best one that came out this year, I would have to say it's the Moira Falling For You palette. This palette is right up my alley. It has these pretty soft, rosy tones, pinks and purples. I can create really soft and neutral looks with this, but it also has the most stunning duochrome shades too, so I can create some more interesting and fun looks with this if I want to. It's a palette that I just keep reaching for over and over again. I think the formula is fantastic, and it's just one of those products that I feel excited about it when I use it, and that's pretty rare nowadays because there's just so much makeup out there, so much new all the time. It can be hard to have that excitement again and this palette does that for me so so anyway guys those are all the questions i hope you enjoyed this video this was so much fun to kind of revisit and do over again so i'd love to hear your thoughts and your answers to these questions down below again if there are any creators that you would like to see do this video i don't know if you can tag them down below i know youtube is doing handles now so you could try putting their handle in and see if it works if not you could always contact them on instagram or other social media platforms i think that would be so much fun so anyway, guys, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, be sure to hit that subscribe button. I'm doing Vlogmas all month. And if you have some time and you'd like to check out another video of mine, I'll go ahead and put one right here on the screen so you can watch that one next. Thank you guys so much for spending time here with me. As always, I really appreciate it so much. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Take care, guys. Bye.